reminder to myself an abdukul ajeezu, da'eefu, miskeenu, zalimu, jahal and by the grace of Allah that we are still in existence that this way of marifa is a ship on a course. It has a direction in which only Allah are traversing. Their ships are under the guidance of Sayyidina Muhammad and they are every year on a course. At the twelfth month is the month of pilgrimage in which that ship is docking. It waited twelve months of journeying and it's now docking at its destination and that was the realities of Zul-Hajj. That that twelve months of journeying towards Allah the majestic might and majesty of all creation, that ship moving in that direction and in their way of understanding every month is under the tajalli of a surah. So we have one through twelve for common understanding but none of it is common at all. And then they have from first month Muharram is Surah Fatiha, twelfth month is Surah Al-Yusuf because it's twelfth month and Surah Al-Yusuf will be an explanation of our way and our path for the khawas and those souls whom Allah has elevated and given them from His ni'mat, it's a gift from Allah and no one can deny the gifts and favours of Allah They move from that one through twelve but through the power of nine. So their first surah at the first month is Surah Al-Tawbah. Their last surah is twelve times nine is Surah Al-Kawthar. From Bab Al-Tawbah they are moving through all the hijabs and the last hijab is the kawthar in which Allah want to dress their souls and bless their souls with the realities and the oceans of kawthari that they are taking from the fountains of Sayyidina Muhammad through that majestic and divinely heart of Sayyidina Muhammad manzal al-Qur'an, the destination of the Holy Qur'an, the source of the Holy Qur'an is flowing from the heart of Prophet In the twelfth surah for Surat al-Yusuf just from the beginning that he begins to describe to his father that, I see the sun and the moon bowing for me and Sayyidina Yaqub tell Sayyidina Yusuf don't tell your brothers, they're going to be jealous. The brothers become jealous and this is all very fast for us to understand to get to this point. The brothers become jealous, they separate him from the father, they throw him in a well. And these are eleven Prophets of Allah showing signs of jealousy and they throw their holy brother who is a Prophet of Allah in a chal, in a well. Right there is Allah says, this is a beautiful story. And this is a beautiful qissa and this is a reality of our tariq and our way into the Divine the Presence. That they remind us, doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter who my father is, doesn't matter who my relatives are, doesn't matter who my brothers are. When Allah wants to guide, He's going to separate you from everyone. That the guidance Allah wants to give may not be the guidance that your relatives want to give you, that your friends want to give you, that your spouse wants to give you, that whoever's around you wants to be a guide. Even the ones who say, there are no guides, is the guide of no guides. Everything is, a, is an advice from people. So Allah showing just on that example, it was thrown into a well. So means our tariq is based on this well and the concept that we're going to be isolated. The minute Allah destines for the servant to be guided, isolation begins to come around them. People don't talk to them that much. 
people don't refer to them that much. As if everything becomes cut off because Allah has a plan that I want something from you and all the things around you are not going to get you there. Then you find in your life <coughs> that you were cut off from everything. So it means if you're online, at home, here, reminder always for myself, our path is all the same. We've heard it and seen it all and there's nothing new under the sun. Allah just re re-establishes the same history. So we've all been isolated and as soon as we take a path of truth of course you'll be isolated from all the people who are not related to that truth. They say, why you have to do like that? Why you have to go sit there? Why you have to chant like that? Why you have to do like that? They're no longer interested. If you don't do the, the things that you were doing with them, they don't want to talk to you. So we came to the understanding that like Sayyidina Yusuf giving an example, you'll be thrown into a hole. That hole for us is a life of contemplation, a life of isolation and seclusion, a life in which we have to and the hadith comes in of Prophet who knows himself will know his Lord. The hadith enters right at that point. That if you don't know yourself, you not know what Allah wants us to uniquely know about His Divinely Presence and every knowledge is to its own degree. What you know, if Allah is revealing to you is not the same as the next person's secret. Allah has infinite oceans of reality and above every knower is a knower. No matter how much that person thinks they've achieved of realities or knowledges or hikmah, Allah has still somebody higher. Means it's infinite in its capacity, so it means that it's unique. So our path is based on to get to know myself. The first phases of knowing myself is if I begin to take a path of tafakkur and muraqabah. Muraqaba is meditation, tafakkur is meditation, muhasaba is an accounting and taking an inventory and counting of ourselves. So it means that every day we set aside a moment of time, three minutes, five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes after the day has been busy, is finished from asr time. So asr in English is late afternoon. Late afternoon to write about the sunset from sunset to the night time when the world is shutting down from the busy work time. You don't meditate during work time because the signal and the hupad dunya, the love of the material world is too strong. The energies and what they're using and the vibrations that are coming are too strong. So the best time is from asr. Right when the sun is moving towards its setting mode, the, di the day is ending and dying. And every day there's a death and there's a birth. At that moment in which the day is finishing and going is a time in which the servant sits by themselves, isolate from everything, cut everything off and begin to ask Allah that, I want to know myself. That I want to understand myself and what did I do today? What did I do wrong today? What did I do bad today? If we don't take an accounting of our day and what we've done, then how do we know that we're growing or every day we're just doing the same bad thing over and over and over? And that's why many people never change. They think because they prayed or they did their, their worshipness everything's great and say, no, if the day didn't have an accounting then we didn't know if we improved that day or worsened that day. So it means then every day is an accounting, just a few minutes that, so, my Lord just tell me what did I do wrong today, let me just to hear my heart. So that's the muhasaba and taking an accounting of ourselves. As soon as the servant is interested in isolating and getting to know themselves. Because this is all about your love for the Divinely Presence. So if you truly want to reach the Presence, 
you have to first understand your own presence. If you can't find the presence within ourselves, how are we going to find Allah on the outside? And then that means that everything that we ask ourselves, then we'll find all of our faults, all of our character defects. As soon as I sit and honestly ask that, what did I do wrong today? And then your consciousness, Allah will push the consciousness to speak to you. You did this wrong, you did that wrong, you did this wrong, you hurt this, you b b pushed this, you bothered this, you did all these actions wrong. And tariqah comes that don't give an excuse for what was done wrong. Find the sickness in what you've done wrong and blame only yourself. It was easy to find all the problems wrong, bum, 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 because of him. No, no, what role did I play and what was wrong? I have to, I'm in search of finding my nafs to be guilty. I'm not trying to vindicate my nafs, I'm not trying to glorify my nafs, I'm trying to beat my nafs. And say, so whatever I did wrong was your fault and find the fault within yourself of these character defects. If the person's not willing to sit for a few minutes to take an accounting of themselves, then not willing to find out the true and honest reason of themselves of what is their character in the role of all of the problems that are happening. We said many times you'll, you'll begin to isolate the sickness. Why is this person bothering you? Why is that person bothering you? Why is this person bothering you? When you go to find it's, I only want to know about myself, why is it that that person's bothering me? Maybe because I have jealousy and then you'll identify the sickness of jealousy. Oh, I'm a very jealous person, that's why everybody bothers me, everybody's annoying to me. So we find the character defect. When we identify the character defect, now we can write it and say, no, no Ya Rabbi I'm noticing I have these character defects. So that every day when I take my muhasaba, my accounting, I can understand what is it that I'm doing wrong. If I don't fix daily then how am I going to grow daily? So people say, oh nothing's happening, nothing's happening. Yeah it's a program if you work it, it works. You don't work it, it's not miraculous. One day like in the supermarket, you know, the, the vegetable aisles, everything will open and you miraculously <laughs> see the heavens. <laughs> no, it's just life and every day you, you sit and you fight all of your waswas, fight all of the character defects, stop having doubt, stop using your brain. This path is not based on the brain, this path is based on the heart, your nafs and the ego is going to fully hijack your head and wants to take control of the heart. So he said, insan's fight is between his heart and his head. The nafs wants full control of the head so that he can govern the heart. And what Allah mu'min baytullah, Allah says, no, no, your heart, my house will be my house. And I want to enter into your heart, don't let that devil enter into your heart. So our life is between our heart and our head to be battling. So every time a whisper comes to the head, a doubt that comes to the head, know that that is from the bad characteristics and that's what has to be fought. And what has to be built is the station of the heart, the power of the heart, the, the energy of the heart. When we left that, now those who want to follow their head, that's a different way. Those who want to follow their heart and build the power of their heart, then they sat down and they said, Shaykh teach me tafakkur. Tafakkur we'll say in English because don't need to, to teach complicated Arabic expressions, meditation. It's who knows himself, knows his Lord is Hadith of Prophet who want to take a path from the hadith of Prophet is for someone to sit to know themselves, to know Allah Then you sit into the science of meditation. That science of meditation 
is that as soon as I want to take a path of tafakkur and meditation I sit and I have to acknowledge that I'm nothing. I am verily an oppressor to me, glory be to Allah and I am an oppressor to myself. I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. If I'm nothing I want to be with my shaykh. I want to be with my shaykh. If you first agree that you're nothing, people go around and somebody came up to them and they say, oh I don't need a shaykh because I'm a, I'm a shaykh myself. Mm -hmm. Whoever doesn't have representation, shaitan is his representative. You're talking about entering into the Divinely Court of Allah and in this foolish courts they tell you don't represent yourself before a judge. Always get a wakil, get an attorney. So, no, no, I'm going to represent myself to the judge, yeah, you're going to get a life sentence, go, go for it. Imagine going before Allah when Allah are just going to say, oh you came to my court, first thing I'm going to do and you can be like those twilight movies, your mouth will have no lips, you'll seal it with a piece of skin that you can't even talk. I said, oh you thought you were coming to my court to open your mouth and talk to me? I said, I seal your lips, immediately your hands will lift and the hands, each finger will have lips on them that speak. Then your toes, each will have lips <laughs> and begin to speak. Who wants their hands to talk to Allah <laughs> Who wants their feet to start talking? So who's the foolish person that said, I'm going to represent myself in Allah's Divinely Presence? No, no one. As soon as they made a path of tafakkur, Ya Rabbi I don't want, I don't want to be judged by you, I don't want to represent myself to you because I said I was a weak servant. Glory be to you and I am an oppressor to myself. What oppressor wants to go directly to Allah Only arrogant think like that. So that's not again the category, so we're sifting out, sifting out. Anyone who talks like, oh, I'll represent myself, oh this is not a path of arrogance, you, you go to the other door. Now we sift it out that we want the people who admit they are oppressors to themselves. La ilaha anta subhanika ili kuntu minat dhalimeen. Glory be to Allah and I am verily Ya Rabbi the first one to admit I am an oppressor to myself. No need to beat me, I surrender, very easy. If your kid talked like that to you, would you get mad and punish them? You'd be very entertained. Why did you do something bad? I don't know, I didn't do it, he did it. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to show you, I know how to get the answer out of you. No, but if the kid comes, no, no dad, I'm the worst one. I'm terribly sorry I did that. You think it's entertaining? I sound nice, like how honest he is. No problem, I'll fix it, don't worry. Why is Allah is, is, is more? That as soon as we admit I'm nothing, I am an oppressor to myself, please help me. So then the, the belief of that student has to be that I am an oppressor to myself and I know nothing and I'm nothing and I, and I don't know how I'm going to reach to you. When the student truly feels that reality they're emptying themselves, they're unplugging, their arrogance is going down and Allah only wants humility. Just admit to it, admit to the crimes you've done, admit to the wrong that you've done. In a continuous state of admitting, admitting, admitting then you will begin to cry every night and make istighfar. Because Ya Rabbi I'm admitting what I'm doing wrong and I really believe I'm admitting what I'm doing wrong and then they begin to make their istighfar and forgiveness, forgive me, forgive me. If for one moment you should lift your mercy from me, good God watch television and see what's happening around the world. Then they believe that I'm nothing, I'm nothing. If I'm nothing then what was Allah's command? Ittaqullah wa kunu ma sadiqeen. Ittaqullah have a consciousness of Allah wa kunu ma sadiqeen. Is Allah's command in Holy Qur'an have a taqwa and a consciousness and keep the company of the sadiq truthful in their 
their deeds and in their actions, not truthful because they look like they have a nice long beard, but in their deeds and in their actions. Did you see from them actions of truthfulness and are their deeds truthful, then those are one of the sadiqs. And Allah's order, have taqwa and accompany them. So what is then taqwa? Is they're going to teach you, you have to have a taqwa means a consciousness of your hearing, a consciousness of your seeing, a consciousness of your breathing, a consciousness of your speaking, consciousness of your touching, consciousness of your walking. Everything has to have a taqwa for Allah The Ya Rabbi Tawbah, I'm feeling ashamed of what my ears are hearing, I have to change it. How are you can have just general taqwa but all your senses are not under taqwa. A consciousness that I should not be hearing something that's so nasty, so bad, Ya Rabbi I feel ashamed, I feel ashamed, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, means then that servant has a taqwa on their hearing. Not just they think, oh no I say taqwa, I have taqwa, we wear beads, we have taqwa, we're called taqwa. Isn't there like a band called taqwa? No, these are actions, the ears have to have taqwa. The shaykh will begin to train. Your eyesight, oh I shouldn't be looking at that, I shouldn't be looking at that. You know how can you meditate when your eyes are, are capturing all day long? Your eyes are a video camera and it's recording onto your hard drive which is your heart. Imagine a, a video camera recording all day long looking at all women, looking at men, looking at everything forbidden and then try to sit down and meditate. It records right under here. As soon as you sit to meditate, wh what are you meditating on? <laughs> All those images? Oh I remember this magazine, oh I remember this, oh I remember this, oh I remember this. You can't get it out of your mind's eye. So then they come and teach, then don't put that into your eyes. You're gonna have a hard time getting rid of it when you sit for meditating tonight. So you can see the system works if you're doing it. If you're truly trying to meditate you get sick of, oh my gosh look at all my, what my eyes saw all day, all day, all day, I can't sit and meditate like this. Then they'll teach you how to make a wudu of your vision, how to wash away what's trying to come through your vision. But this is a taqwa of the eyesight, that they became conscious of their eyesight and they realized that they better keep their eyes and their gaze down and they don't need to look at what's not concerning them, it will affect their tafakkur, their meditation. Then they had a consciousness of their breath. If you're trying to breathe and bring the energy of a life force into your reality and that uh, the breath has a secret of zikrahu, a nafas al rahma when awliya want to open the nafas for you that your breath will pull in and pull apart the reality. The only way to explain it is that this power of hu within every breath and every atom, Allah will give you the ability to separate that qudra and bring that power into your breath. And do you think that would come by cigarette smoke? Then you have to have a taqwa for your breath. So much taqwa that you're scared to be even around that because you know that this would affect the breath and the energy of your qudra. If you're relying on that energy and your being is relying on the power of that breath, shaitan tries to make even that smoke to move towards you from a distance. It like takes this dun 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 and you see the smoke is coming, the smell of it from far away, shaitan tries to throw it into the face. So it means they have a consciousness of their breath because they're using these, these senses. They're using their hearing, they're using their seeing, their spiritual vision, they're using the power of their breath, they're, they're, they have a taqwa of their hands that they don't do something with their hands so that they feel ashamed later and they don't take their feet where they can't answer later to Allah With all of that taqwa and consciousness then Allah will open a taqwa upon their tongue which then become the tongue of truth, their talk from truth, lisan al-haqq and they inherit from lisan al-sadiq al-aliyya. Means that to inherit that tongue of truth everything has to be under Allah's taqwa, 
وَقُنُوا مَا صَادِقِينَ So when they're saying, Ya Rabbi I have to keep with the Sadiqeen, that means that in my time of meditation if I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, Ya Rabbi let me to be with my teacher. Let me to be in the presence of my teacher at all times. That let me to always be under his nazar and under his presence. Let his nazar and his light always be with me and I always be with him. And that becomes the opening of the understanding of what is tafakkur. So it means first we have to admit to all of these characteristics and then I have to begin to sit and say that I'm nothing. And Allah in order for us hold tight to the rope of Allah and don't separate. Don't separate means that never leave that nazar. Don't think there's a time in which Allah is not seeing you, Prophet is not seeing you. You have two eyes on, from this side, two eyes from that side, four eyes of angels are seeing you, shaitan is seeing you, everyone is seeing you. Most definitely the shaykh is seeing. So since he's seeing I should admit that I'd like to see you too. He sees me, I become conscious of that. I know that the shaykh is there, Sayyidi you're there, you're watching me. I don't need to focus on I can't see your face, I can't see your face because that's from the nafs. Who are you to see the face? Just say, I know that I'm in your presence. I know that I'm in your presence and I'm nothing, I'm nothing. And in your heart's eye, in the eye of your faith you begin to know that he's right there and he's watching. And I know that you're there and you're watching me, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. And then that builds and build that relationship with the presence of that reality as in Allah make it to be more and more and more real inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. InshaAllah we make Thursdays a little bit more on the subject of tafakkur. And based on this tafakkur and what we talked about, what uh, does anybody have from online related? Someone said, you answered all my questions. <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> if they have a question related to the tafakkur then we can try to, to address that inshaAllah. Any questions, Raj? Sayyidina, I don't know if my conscience is speaking to me or if it's my ego or what when I contemplate. When you're contemplating? How do I differentiate if it's my conscience or if it's my ego talking to me? Yeah. When we said before that the, the conscious being from the soul and the ego being the nafs, anytime the nafs talks it's a defense of the self. This happened because of this for you, this happened. The nafs is always trying to defend. The soul is happy with all sorts of difficulty. So the soul never defends something wrong that was done to you. The soul is happy with that, it says, you deserved it and that you should be crushed for Allah's sake. And the nafs says, no, 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 I have to take retribution. The nafs is always in a state of defending the body. And the soul is very content in crushing the body. And inspiration of the nafs is to defend the body, so I, let me be inspired to go tell him he's wrong, it's from the nafs. The soul's inspiration is, I should pray about 50 rakahs right now as a tawbah and those are the hardest to follow. The soul's inspiration is for worshipness. When you feel that you're being inspired by your soul, say, what is the inspiration of the soul? It's for worshipness. I should do now 20,000 salawats and I shouldn't move until that's finished. I should do 10,000 istighfars, I should pray 20 rakahs in my salah. Those inspirations come and people brush that away really quick and say, oh no, no, I don't feel like that at all. But the nafsani one is all based on the self and glorify the self and vindicate the self. And that's what we said, Western words is, is based on completely egoistic understandings which we would never use those words from Sufi training, self-realization. 
that's like saying ego realization, self-help, ego help. You don't want help from your ego and, and you don't want the, the ego to help you in your realization. So this play on words are very dangerous. So our way is, is based on how to destroy the ego and how to bring the power to the soul. And they both, they want different things. Nobody asking? Someone asked the question, are there physical effects on the heart, hands and feet while doing the bhakkar? Physical effects? Yeah, physical effects. Sure. When Allah wants to open these senses they're going to be many physical effects. They're going to feel different energies entering into their ears, they're going to feel different subtleties upon their hand, upon their feet because you become latif, you become more subtle. When you focus on these senses and you focus on these body parts means that it become more sensitive to the energy and to the vibration. When Allah wants to open its sensitivity means your focus is on your ears and you're trying to live a life of samina wa atana, you become very sensitive to hearing. You hear things, you, you, you feel vibrations, you have a depth in understanding of sound and, and salawats and all of these realities. The more you're focusing on hearing, the more sensitive you become and more attuned to it. And also with sound, loud sounds and, and agitations and vibrations, everything. So then yes, of course, anything that you focus in will become much more sensitive under the different uh, characteristics of subtlety from Sifat al Latif. That's it. Uh, what's the best zikr to do during meditation and how to meditate? With the zikr of who? Oh. Yeah. When they're going to do the meditation either when they're sitting for the meditation and they try a couple of times, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, let me to be in the presence of my shaykh, Sayyidi dress me with your nazar, just let me become familiar with your presence is always there looking at me with your heart's faith. Do you see the, the presence of your shaykh? It's like right now you're looking at him, close your eyes and visualize he's right there. So anyone looking, you just close your eyes, can't you see the same image in your heart's eye? And you keep that image, keep that image that the shaykh is right there. Say, you just dress me from your nazar and then you may if you're going to be doing your awrad, you do your awrad, Ashana Shaykh Muhammad 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 Ashana Astaghfirullah, 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 that keep your nazar upon me. So then they do their awrad with full tafakkur. So that it's the tafakkur that begin to open these fires and these energies. Then if I have to do my Allah or my salawats then I can do my zikr of Allah, 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 Allah. Because this is the source of power, the, the tafakkur is the source of power. Want to be nothing, if you're nothing that's how to open the fires of the shaykhs and that the tarbiyah of the shaykhs, that they're going to have their nazar upon you and begin the tarbiyah process, begin to send unto your consciousness what you're doing wrong, begin to send unto you lights and energies. Only through that dimension everything opens. That's the real opening, that's the real door when Allah say, go through the home to the proper opening. The proper open, opening is malakut and the soul, not mulk, Allah didn't care for the mulk. So when you enter through the soul that's the relationship that Allah wounds. So they do their zikr, they, they do their salawats. When they're sitting and asking for the salawats, Allah said, Muhammad said, Muhammad said, dress me from your life, put your faiz upon me that I'm nothing. Later in their tafakkur they'll be trained in their tafakkur that say that there can't be two, there can only be one. That I'm seeing you but I don't want to exist, I don't want to exist, put your light and your dress upon me. And those whom rise to that level of understanding, they negated themselves and they brought the dress of their shaykh upon themselves and they sit and they do their salawats, Allahumma say, Alhamdulillah, 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 in that, in that state. That they acknowledge that they're nothing, if they're nothing then they're in the dress of the shaykh. The dress dresses over them and they find themselves like a piece of dust within his reality and they're making their zikr and their salawat. Their zikr, their salawat 
Later when they want to bring the power of their breath, they can do their breathing. They can do the zikr of who? And then each faculty is something different. That would be the meditation on the breath and how to do the meditation of the breath. So you have muhabbat of shaykh, the love of the shaykhs, the guides, hudur al mashaykh, keeping his hudur and keeping his presence. That love makes us to come to the association, the hudur means to keep his presence. I love to be in the presence but I have to be in the presence all the time. If I'm not in the presence I'm under attack and under difficulty. And that's when Allah Kunu ma sadiqeen didn't say, Kunu ma sadiqeen only in the daytime, Kunu ma sadiqeen only fajr. No, Allah's order is, keep the company of sadiqeen. Allah's words are eternal and have no time. And more important it's not even from the mulk, it's from Malkut Allah's keeping. To keep their company, reach to that reality and never split from that moment. Never to be on your own, as soon as you stray shaitan will grab you. So why would anyone want to be away from their madad and their support? And Allah just said, hold tight to the rope, not in the daytime and at nighttime you don't have to hold or only on Jummah you hold to the rope. So only because everyone now only goes for Jummah, the rest of Islam they don't have any understanding. So no, no, this is a, a practice that you do all day and night, day and night. Subhanahu wa bika rabbal izzata ma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri surat al Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly. Join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.